And we're on the floor here at the uh, NRB, the big exhibit floor, and I've got Tony Perkins with me with the, the uh, Family Research Council, a great organization in the United States of America. They've got their big bus in here, and uh, I tell you what, if there's not a more prominent display, you got to have the cake. Well, I'm waiting to just drive it around and blow the horn a little bit, get some more attention. But yeah, we're, we're, we're here, got a lot of folks coming by. It's a, it's a, a great week here for folks that um, communicate across uh, the Christian community uh, the, the issues. We, of course, we focus on the public policy issues, but there's people here who help people take the gospel out across the world. So it's a great week. You know, you've done so much work for families across the country, and folks, I want you to continue to keep Tony in your prayers. But your bus has a mission. Tell me about the mission of the bus. Well, the bus does have a mission. The, the mission is to take the message out across this country. Uh, and you know the importance of this, having served in public office, that elections have consequences. And if, uh, if we as Christians are not registered and not voting our values, our biblical values, then someone else's values are going to determine the future course of our, of our states, our, our communities, and, and our country. And that's what we've seen in the last three years. And so we're working to get the message out, going to churches and uh, conservative events, encouraging people to register, register their friends, their family members, and then make sure that they vote. What do you uh, think the mood of the country is right now? Well, I'm actually pretty optimistic. I, I think Americans have seen what uh, big, intrusive uh, government brings, uh, especially government that is not rooted in a solid uh, uh, Christian ethic. And, you know, we've just seen it recently, the last couple of weeks, where the administration has come out with a mandate on contraception. It's, it's not an issue of contraception. It's an issue of religious freedom that they're forcing churches and uh, religious organizations to violate the very tenets of their faith. If they can do that to the Catholic Church and others, they can do anything they want to do. And I think Americans are beginning to see what's behind this administration. Are you encouraged by, uh, for, for the first time I've seen in a long time, the church is standing up in a united effort for life and for values, which is what I call long overdue, but but uh, welcome. I, I am excited what I see. That is encouraging. And I, I hope that it's not a flash in the pan, but it is a sustainable effort or a presence of being salt and being light. But this last incident that we just talked about with the mandate uh, it becomes uh, at the end of a long train of abuses when it comes to religious freedom. I mean, you had this under this administration, the Bible banned from Walter Reed Medical Center. Uh, you've had uh, uh, Franklin Graham disinvited to the Pentagon. Uh, you've had all of these uh, cases, uh, the National Cemetery in Houston, where graveside services had to be uh, sanitized from any kind of religious expression. Uh, churches, uh, you know, being excluded from certain public events. So it's very clear that uh, the environment that's been created by this administration is hostile to religious freedom. And I think people are starting to see that. And I think even pastors who have said, you know, I don't want to get involved in public policy, I don't want to get involved in politics, are beginning to see and realize that their ability to present the gospel is at risk. So what would your encouragement be to the folks listening of what they could do beginning with their prayer life? How should they pray? Well, there's uh, really three steps we talk about. We talk about first we must pray. Everything we do should begin in prayer and begin to pray. And, and, and the type of prayer we're talking about is intercessory prayer. Begin praying for our nation, praying for the lost in our communities. And then we've got to prepare. We've got to be ready to, to serve in our communities. We've got to be ready to share our faith. We've got to be prepared for elections. We've got to know where candidates stand on the issues and not just vote based upon who had the best 30 second commercial on TV, but where they stand on the core issues. And then thirdly, we've got to participate. Unless we're in the arena, we cannot make a difference. Well, I appreciate what you do. If people want to learn more about Family Research Council, how can they get more? Well, they can go to our website, frc.org. That's FRC Family Research Council, frc.org. And, and while they're there, they can actually sign up for my daily update that we send out that goes out across the country, or they can become my friend on Facebook, Tony Perkins. So join me, and we'll get you that information. He's a great guy in the United States of America. He's one of us. I want you to put him on your prayer list. 
Tony Perkins, thanks so much for what you do for America. Thank you. Good to be with you. God bless. Very good. We're going to continue from the NRB. Stay with us.